But with the Aussie dollar uh, in focus, let's talk about currency and currency markets. Lachlan Meakin from Go Markets joins me now. Lachlan, thanks for your company today. Uh, I guess just starting with that wage growth number, it didn't really seem to do much to the Aussie dollar overall. No, mate, I don't think it's a figure that um, the RBA is paying too much attention to, especially when it comes in, you know, not too far out of line. I, I think it was a figure they probably paid more attention attention to when um, they were trying to get inflation up into their target band rather than down. So um, I was watching the the 30-day in the bank futures and uh, they didn't move the needle and needle at all, that figure. So it looks like the, the rate hike of 25 next month still at 60%. Um, Tomorrow's employment figures, I think, will be much more important. If if, the, if, they, if they come in really hot, there'll be a, a repricing of a higher chance of that 25. Um, uh, if they come in weak, then you might see the no change uh, crowd get a you know become become the favourite. Mm. I mean, that's where we've shifted to, right? It's, I mean, it's no longer a 25 or 50 argument. It's a it's a 25 or nothing. Yeah, well, that's what the futures are pricing are pricing in, which is it's, it's surprise from a couple of months ago, isn't it? When uh, 50 seemed the, the, the new 25, but it just shows how much, I guess, the RBA has moved into the, the slow lane and, and happy to see how everyone else goes and, and take things, uh, take their time with things. But um, yeah, so 40% no cut, uh, no rate, no hike, sorry, and 60% a hike. So um, it certainly, if it goes into the into the meeting like this next month, um, there certainly could be some some Aussie dollar volatility on, volatility on that. But I think, as you touched on, I'd I think the the RBA is is not really the, the main driver of, of of the Aussie dollar, which um, you know previous guests guests talked about as well. The it just seems to be risk sentiment is the main thing, um, a proxy for China and Chinese growth. So any any kind of effect the RBA RBA will RBA will have, um, I think, will be temporary, and that that's been pretty evident in the last few months anyway. Yeah, certainly. So, I mean, what do we look for now? Is it just uh, continued utterings confirmed or otherwise about potential reopenings in, in China or easing of restrictions? I, I do know that there was some, you know, perhaps substantial news about support or uh, someone called it a rescue package uh, for their property market over the weekend. But it's it's all that sort of drip feed news flow that'll that drive the Aussie from here. Yeah, exactly, mate. There's there's not a heap of news coming out. Coming out. Um, I mean, the US dollar obviously is a big driver of all them of all currencies at the moment. We, I mean, they're, they're, each currency has its own um, personality personalities, but it's literally just this risk on risk off sentiment. Risk is on. Uh, US dollar drops, equities go up, and and currencies paired against the US dollar go up. When and risk risk is off, the opposite happens. It's, it's been happening like that for a few months now. Um, so anything out of China, I mean, their weak figures yesterday, uh, that was kind of a catalyst for, for, the, for the equity markets to rally. I mean, the good news is bad news these days um, with that kind of hope there would be stimulus. So that did see the Aussie strangely on weak Chinese figures, figures you'd think, rally on that. Um, so, yeah, the Aussie is just going to be pushed and pulled. Risk sentiment, global risk sentiment, and, and it has improved. I mean, we've seen equities rally uh, a, a fair bit in the last month and, and the same in the Aussie dollar. But, uh, you know, with the... What happened last night in Poland? You can see that that risk sentiment's quite um, quite fragile. If, if it could turn any time, and we and, and I mean with the CPI figure out last week, I mean have one figure like that come out and see such a massive repricing of pricing of the market. It, I mean it could happen the other way if, if a figure comes out the other way. So it's um yeah it's 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 a it's a volatile market. It's very hard to predict at the moment the FX market market. I mean and and global um, risk sentiment in general to be honest. Yeah, it does sort of feel like that kind of risk on, risk off dynamic where everything is more or less yeah. the one trade, which uh, can, you know, you've got a bad depending which yeah, way. Is the, bit. is the Fed going to pivot? Is it not going to pivot? Mm. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk about that because uh, we have had numerous Fed speakers coming out, one of which was, you know, gracing our shores on, on Monday to discuss, you know, the outlook now for, for Fed policy. Uh, what do you think we're learning from, I suppose, the, the first, um, you know, twittering, you might say, of some of these uh, Fed speakers? Uh, after last, uh, or the, the, the decision that we got, what was it, last week, week before? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's been a bit of, bit of pushback from the Fed governors. I think after the CPI last week, I, I know Waller on the weekend in particular was um, telling the market not to jump the gun. Um, I think what the Fed doesn't want to see is the market pricing in, they're going to pivot and, and loosening financial conditions without them um, being a part of it. So I, I expect that they will try, will try to jawbone it a fair bit to, to um, you know, put the, the optimists try, back in their place to an extent. Um, I mean, the next, the only real big figures out, figures out of the US 
in the next before the next Fed meeting really is the non-farm payroll. So Fed speakers are really going to take on a lot of importance in the, up until the, the Fed back, back, uh, blackout period in a couple of weeks. So um, yeah, anything they say, I think will move the market, uh, whether it's long term or not. But the, the, the general gist of it, of it seems to be they're pushing back against this pivot. Um, so we'll see if they continue that for the next few weeks and, and you know try to temper these um, the bulls, I guess, with with uh, the, the thought that the Fed's going to give in any minute. So, I mean, inflation's still got a long way to go. So, um, and, and that seems to be the message they're saying: one figure's not uh, evidence of of this peaking. So, don't get too far out of yourself. So, um, yeah, be interesting to see what they come out with the next couple of weeks, anyway. Yeah, certainly. And the expectation, more or less, is still that they'll they will go fifty uh, next month, if I'm not mistaken, as far as market pricing. Uh, yeah, to 50 is pretty much uh, mostly priced here, mate. And I, I think a, a slight 75. Um, but yeah, it, it looks like 50, unless something drastically changed between now and, and, and December 3rd, 50 seems to be the way the way that it's going to go. It seems a lock, yeah. Yeah, sure. A, a little bit of a slight pivot to things here, but gold, I, I would imagine uh, a client, client favourite in terms of trading, also something of a, a proxy for well, US dollar yields, things that we, uh, we've been speaking about. Uh, any view on gold at the moment? Because it, clearly it's uh, looking a lot more perky than it was uh, a few weeks ago when everyone was sort of writing it off. Oh, absolutely, mate. I mean, it's been an interesting one, gold. I mean, only a few weeks ago, it was in the mid 1600s and, and you know, we push, we're pushing up to the 1800 now. I think, um, I mean, the you could almost say the uh, the woes of the crypto world's almost helped gold as well as this kind of alternative, alternative store of value, um, and a weak US dollar obviously as well. Um, rates coming down, it's it's looking okay. There's there's a, a big resistance level around 1806, I think I think, which is um, I think about twenty dollars higher than where we are now. So whether we can gravitate to that uh, and test it. We'll see, but um, the gold bugs have been very happy, very happy, mate, because they've been waiting a long time to, for this. So, yeah, it's, it's had a good run. Yeah, I'm, uh, I don't know if you follow him on Twitter or not, but I'm uh, interested to see, and perhaps we'll have to perhaps peruse the uh, the site in a second, Peter Schiff and his uh, war against uh, the crypto bugs, oh, yeah. um, whether he starts to uh, proclaim victory on the basis of what's happened in the last couple of days but um i wouldn't be surprised mate. Yeah. i think he does every time bitcoin drops 10 percent. yeah yeah pr- probably even less too mind you um but uh last but not least just um anything we should be looking forward to in the, in the next few days here or abroad just as far as event risk grows anything for the traders out there that might uh i guess spark a little bit of vol- volatility some tradable opportunities I think probably the most interesting one to be watching would be the pound the next couple of days is uh, the CPI tonight, right? um, the monetary report, and, and probably the big one tomorrow, which is the uh, the forecast that everyone's been waiting for since since the last prime minister had to to quit due to due to you know some of the things she was trying to bring in. Um, this is what people have been waiting for to see what the new government's going to do going forward with their with their monetary policy. So certainly the pound, I think, um, would be interesting over the next what. 36 hours or so. Um, I mean, they've given the game away that it's going to be a fairly painful uh, uh, view of the budget. So if if they don't deliver on that, I can see the pound and guilt selling off because the market's expecting that to 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 get the finances back in order back in order over there. So, but besides that, mate, um, the employment report out of Australia as well tomorrow I think will be, if it comes well outside expectation, there'll there'll be a real repricing of thing of the um, the rate hike odds. For, for the next RBA meeting. So the Aussie dollar could have a, a bit of a burst in either direction, but whether it's sustained sustained or not, I, I don't think so. It's, 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 it's still being driven by risk as far as I'm concerned. 